The UK has gone through some big changes over the past few years, especially when it comes to tax on property, which has forced tons of landlords who own big portfolios in their own name completely out of the industry. But with increasing regulation, more rules and changing tax, is buy to let really dead or is the industry just being cleaned up? In this video, I explore why I bought my first buy to let in a limited company. Now, there's tons of pros and cons to buying a property in a limited company, but it really is all about you and your individual circumstances. And the only person who can really help you understand that is a professional accountant. In my own personal opinion, I think the government are doing the right thing because it's moving people to act more professionally within proper companies and businesses and actually run a real business rather than the average person either being an accidental landlord. And I really think it'll start to improve the quality of properties because you'll have more people treating it professionally and like a business and doing it seriously. With all the increasing regulation rules, there are going to be two types of people. The first type are going to be the ones who suffer and don't keep up and really start to fall behind, they're the ones who have the bad poor quality properties. But those who ride the wave of regulation and really start to play by the rules, have a company and enjoy the tax-free benefits, then those are the ones who are going to flourish and be successful in the future. So firstly, it's a blessing and a curse at the same time. Unfortunately for me, I'm a higher rate taxpayer. And by the time I've factored in the tax, the national insurance, and then also the student loan, that's over half of my income completely gone back to the government. However, if I put the property into a limited company, then that means that I would only pay 19% corporation tax on the profits after all of the expenses. So I've pretty much gone from 50% all the way down to 19%, which is a 30% saving, which is back into the company profits that can be completely reinvested. But that's not all. Within a limited company, you can put as many expenses as you want on the business, and this actually reduces your taxable profit. It's all perfectly above board, and every company in the world, and especially in the UK, does this. And if you haven't read Rich Dad Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki, then I would highly, highly recommend checking it out because this explains it in incredible detail. Detail. Whether it's driving to the solicitors, paying for some postage, doing viewings, whatever it is, you can put an expense on your business, including the refurb of the property. So for example, let's say that you had a hundred pound revenue in your business and you had 50 pound of expenses. Rather than paying tax on the hundred pound, you can actually wipe out 50 pounds because of the expenses and therefore you are left with 50 pound profit and you only pay tax on that remainder 50 pounds. So for me, because I'm a higher rate taxpayer, for example, if I bought a drill set in my own name through savings after tax and through my salary, then that would cost me 300 pounds, but that's all after tax, which bearing in mind, I've lost 50% straight away. However, if I buy that in the business, it's with money that is before tax. So spending that same 300 pounds in the business has technically saved me 50% and therefore the cost of the drill is only 150 pound at half price because I'm not paying tax NASA insurance and student loan, and then using whatever's left to pay for the product. Instead, I pay for it first, and then that minimizes all of the tax because it's an expense. Likewise, if you're a 20% taxpayer, then you're more likely to save yourself between 20 to 30% by buying in the business first, rather than doing it in your own name after tax. If none of that makes any sense, then just check out Rich Dad Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki and it will make way more sense. And then when it comes to things like mortgage interest, in the good old days, landlords with property in their own name could claim the mortgage interest as a deductible expense, thus making it more tax efficient. Meaning, if you're paying £200 a month on interest, any profits in the company are reduced by this amount every single month. So let's say you made £200 profit every single month, you basically would pay no tax if you then had £200 expenses. But but over the past few years, the government have been phasing out buy to let tax relief to the point where you can only get a 20% tax relief on your rental income. The rest of it, you do pay tax on. So it's more tax efficient and you can claim way more expenses through a company, but that's not it. It's all really about your future plans. So for me, I know that I want to build a bigger property portfolio, reinvest the profits, and I don't need to live off of those profits every single month. So instead, all of the cash that goes into the business, the profit stays in there and is reinvested. And that's one of the joys of having a limited company because the more you can keep that money in there, the less tax you're going to pay, and then that snowball will start to grow faster. It means that after my very first buy to let that's making around 5,000 pounds net profit every single year through rental income, before tax, that's really gonna to start to save up. That's almost 4,000 pounds a year that I'm saving towards the next deposit on top of my other businesses and also the savings for my salary as well. But I hear you say that limited companies can be expensive because you have accountancy fees and other costs, which is very, very, very true. And this is why it's really important to really think about your own needs, your own goals and what you want to do. I know for me that I want to build a bigger portfolio. I don't need to take cash out of the company for many, many years so I can reinvest all of those profits. So it 
makes sense. But if you're just looking to buy one property as a nest egg for retirement, then actually a limited company might not be best for you and instead, putting it into your own name might be a better option. But again, the best thing to do is speak to an accountant about what you'd like to do and your future plans, and they will happily give you a well-rounded summary of your own personal finances. For me, even with the accountancy fees, which are around 800 pounds a year, also you've got a more expensive mortgage, more expensive interest rates, it all does add up. But because I'm reinvesting the profits and I'm saving so much money on tax, national insurance and student loan, because all of that money's being reinvested, and then I can leverage it with bank finance and more mortgages, it means that that snowball is growing quicker. So for me, it made absolute sense to do this. I've actually gone one step further and own a holding company. Now, the holding company sits at the top of the structure and owns multiple other companies. So one currently is the property one, and then the other is my YouTube and online content business. That means that I can have two separate streams of income coming into both businesses, and over time, what I can start to do is then pay dividends from the YouTube company up into the hold co. And bear in mind, dividends after tax are then completely tax free. So all of this moves up tax free and then goes back down into the property company, ready to be used as a deposit. But because this is a loan, I can also charge interest and it goes all back into the holding company, tax free with interest. And in the future, I want to create a property development company. So this makes it really easy to create another subsidiary company that goes into the holding company. And that means I can have different sit codes, get more lending, and treat the project separately as a legal entity and therefore protects all of the other companies in case anything went wrong. And lastly, it means, again, because I'm a high rate taxpayer, because I don't need to move money out of the holding company into my own name, I can just keep on recycling that cash until the day I'm ready to work full time in the company, at which point I still only need to pay myself the minimum wage. And at some point in the future, I can start to go full time in the property business and draw the salary that I need. But rather than paying myself a huge amount of money and paying loads of tax, that's insurance and student loan on that, Instead, what I'm going to do is just pay myself the bare minimum that I need and then keep on reinvesting all of those profits into the business. That way I can minimize my own personal tax and also still keep as much money as possible to reinvest and grow the business into something incredible. In conclusion, for me, having a limited company is really, really beneficial and the right decision. It means that I'll be able to grow my property portfolio quicker. I can invest the money into new projects like new developments rather than just staying in the same strategy. And I can also joint venture in the future as well. If you found this video useful, then definitely check out this one here which is my deep dive into why I'm using a holding company and why it's so useful in a property structure. So feel free to check this out and I will see you in the next video.